So please introduce yourself as a not not as a company, but as a, as a person for yourself. Should I go first, or yeah, go ahead. Okay. So my name is Champagne Zhao. Uh, most people know me as CZ in the crypto world. Um, so I started. I joined the crypto world in 2013. I went to work for Blockchain.info first. Uh, I was working with Roger Ver and Ben Reeves and Nicholas Carey. Um, but I joined OKCoin OK later. So um, and then I worked there for about a year, um, and then I left and started my own technology company. Um, and we were doing ex exchange systems. So in 2017, we said. Uh, in this year, July, we said we're going to do Binance. So that's when this project started. Before I joined the, uh, the crypto space, I had a startup, uh, a technology startup as well, that has offices in Shanghai, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Los Angeles. <coughs> so before the crypto space, I was working in my own startup again for eight years. And before that, I was at Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg in uh, New York. <coughs> All right, my name is Ted. Uh, friends call me Ted, or you can call me Teddy. It's a teddy bear. <laughs> um, okay. I have I have always been a technology and uh, business enthusiast. Um, I graduated from Cornell University uh, in the States with masters in computer science, and after that, I have embarked on a journey because my passion is in business. So I have embarked on a journey for fifteen years in international business, marketing, and branding initiatives. And I've been through the different um, technology sectors and phases, including earliest in 2002 when I was with ASUS in the computing side of things. And later I was able to get into the mobility side of things. And as of late, before I came back to join Binance, I was in Europe uh, looking after the entire EMEA region for a company that sells the cloud and big data um, hardware for storage. <clears throat> and because of one phone call with Champagne, <laughs> I was drawn to this incredible and grand mission, how he wanted to transform the blockchain industry. So I decided to fly back and join him in the Binance mission. And right now I handle um, the head of international markets. I'm the head of international markets in Binance. And I head um, the research team and the international expansion team. And I hope to be of great contribution. So the next question is, what is Binance? And what's your corporate philosophy? Sure. All right. So Binance is a cryptocurrency exchange platform so we have, our core business is a pure cryptocurrency exchange that allows people to exchange from any cryptocurrency to any other cryptocurrency. In fact, we should say any blockchain asset. It doesn't have to be a currency. Now it can be a token, it can be something else. As long as it's a blockchain asset, we can exchange it. Um, so, but we are expanding around the exchange space into other businesses as well, but all centralized around exchanges. So we are we have Binance uh, Launchpad, which is an ICO platform, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Binance uh, Labs, which is a blockchain technology incubator. So these are the three businesses that kind of uh, together forms our ecosystem. Um, in terms of philosophy. We believe everything will be tokenized in the future, so everything. Um, basically, I think every country, every province, every company, every team, every person, everything can be tokenized. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it's token, once you have a token for it, uh, you need to determine a price or the value. And that's where exchanges come in. So we see a huge potential in, for the exchanges to service this like longer term vision. So Binance uh, exchange platform is based in Hong Kong? Right, so when we first started, mm -hmm. uh, we registered Binance.com with a company in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now we're, we're in the process of moving that to Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands? Yes. So uh, Binance.com will belong to a company in the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. okay. So 
a lot of people think that Binance is from Hong Kong in Japan. And also, many Japanese people in reality think that China and Hong Kong are the same country. And so, due to the recent uh, strict uh, law, law in, uh, policy in China, and they have some concern uh, using Binance platform. But what, what can, how, how do you say how secure it is to trade in, using Binance? Sure. So Hong Kong and China, Hong Kong uh, and China's relationship is very interesting because the, Hong Kong now belongs to China, but it's ruled by two different policies. Mm -hmm. So most financial and monetary policies that applies into mainland China uh, are different in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So they don't they don't apply the same rules. Mm -hmm. So Hong Kong was not affected by the Chinese sort of cryptocurrency regulation mm -hmm. in September. Um, so luckily, at that time, we were registered in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and you can see that many Chinese exchanges were shut down, mm -hmm. uh, but we were not. Mm -hmm. So we just continued to service without any interruption. Um, so it, it is secure. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, because we're in the process of moving even our registration from Hong Kong into uh, uh, Cayman Islands, I think. Uh, the chance of us being affected by the Hong Kong regulations will also reduce. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you choose a new currency to be uh, on your uh, to register on your uh, platform, how do you choose the next currency? Uh, uh, sure. Um, we currently don't list any currency in terms of the fiat currency, uh, but we do list many coins. Yes. Uh, People call it old coins or tokens. Mm -hmm. um, it is a very rigorous process that is as thorough and rigorous as the traditional investment banking. Um, it even rivals um, the prudence of um, the debt or the mortgage departments of many banks. We have the very professional uh, research and analyst team that covers every aspect of a particular project mm -hmm. as we see it as supposed to be good for a long-term investment by the Binance community mm -hmm. users. So in terms of the philosophy of reviewing these projects, we look at every token or coin as if a long-term investment. And the basics uh, include uh, the concept, which will be drawn from the white paper as well as the concept that is the direction of the team. Uh, the team itself, including the core members, their advisors, and their industry alliances. Um, the product itself, which should ultimately be what they're trying to achieve, how they're trying to make use of blockchain technology to better the world, and many more factors that are, I would call it, um, you can say trade secret, but so far it has been one of the best part of Binance because it actually allows us to tell the community users that we got you covered. We are very careful. But please give us more time because we take a long time <laughs> to review. So you uh, impl implemented a voting system to uh, uh, okay. so for the new ICOs on your platform. So, and also the collaborating with other cryptocurrency uh, platforms. So can, can you comment on that? What your intention behind these uh, um, voting systems and other, like these collaboration with other cryptocurrency companies? So the voting was to, so we select coins from different uh, angles. Mm -hmm. So the review team does their very careful review. But we also want to hear the user's voice. Mm -hmm. So what our user wants to uh, list. Mm -hmm. So every month we give them a competition, <laughs> right? To say, well, not 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 the users, but the coins. 
a voting a vote. Mm -hmm. um, this idea actually didn't come from us. It came from our users. Uh, our users asked for it. Uh, the first the first one was we said if in our Slack channel, we said if we can get twenty votes for one coin, we will list it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, our Slack channel was only ninety eight people. <laughs> So this is very early on, and one of the users said that. Um, and of course, they tried to get everybody in. So our Slack channel grew from 98 people to 500 people that day. Wow. So it's because of that wow. vote. So uh, that's the first vote. And of course, the 20 votes was very quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then we listed, we listed the coin. And then uh, a little bit later, we said, OK, we'll shoot for 100 votes. And that was very easy. Uh, later on, some uh, Chris, uh, I've actually never met him, his name is Chris BHK, I think, and um, he said, why don't you do a vote every month? Mm -hmm. so that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And so now we do the vote, and um, uh, we still have a selection on the coins that can participate, but it's a more, more relaxed selection, mm -hmm. mostly based on users. So basically this is a chance for our users to say, okay, they have participation in what coins we list as well. So it's a good, it's a very good way to engage. Yeah. What about the collaborating with a cryptocurrency exchange? Okay. What, what's your intention behind that collaboration? So we are in a very new industry, mm -hmm. and uh, I think now even with other exchanges, uh, we collab, we should collaborate more than we compete, mm -hmm. because we want to make the industry bigger. Right, the industry right now is very small. Uh, we need to, have more, to work together to make the entire industry bigger instead of fighting for each other mm -hmm. on this little platform, on this little bit of users, right? So we want to collaborate with every type of exchange out there. Um, for example, we have a, a partnership with Coin in Japan. Uh, they accept Japanese yen, we don't. Uh, they can do Japanese KYC, we can't. Uh, they are licensed by the Japanese FSA, we're not. Right, so uh, we want to work together okay. and make it. The, we want to service the entire world, and we want everything, everybody in the world to work together. So there is some competition sometimes, mm -hmm. but we think right now because the industry is so new, mm -hmm. we can. It's better to work for everyone to work together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what the scariest thing for a platform to have is cyber attacks. And also having too many, uh, uh, having, having too many, uh, deal too much training mm -hmm. in uh, on the platform sometimes cause a shutdown mm -hmm. of the um, the system. Mm -hmm. So when those two things happen, how do you uh, deal with those uh, uh, okay. events? So there's really two parts. The first part is security for the uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a very broad and deep topic. Mm -hmm. um, I can talk for like a long, long time about <laughs> yeah. it. So basically, there's physical security, there's a uh, network security, there's a uh, business like personnel security. Uh, there's many different aspects to it. Uh, we go through a lot of uh, depth to ensure security. That's the number one priority for any exchange, and for us as well. And we do that quite well. We've been in this industry for 20 years, um, both in the traditional finance, but also in crypto. Mm -hmm. So we do it quite well. I think that probably we go through so much trouble to ensure security. Um, so uh, it actually slows down our business. But um, I can't go into a lot of detail there. Uh, on the second question, the trading volume, let's say if a lot of people wants to trade on our exchange, um, that part is done by engineering, architecting the system from the ground up to be a very, when we designed the system, we knew we wanted to be the biggest exchange mm -hmm. there is. We wanted to be, we wanted our exchange to handle a thousand times more volume than we have today, than everybody else combined today. So we engineered the system to handle very large loads. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you one piece of uh, number. Today, um, every second, our system pump out five gigabits of data. So, um, just to put that into perspective, a small DDoS attack, like a DDoS, um, denial of service attack, is usually 5 gigs, 10 gigs. The big one will be 100, 300, 600 gigs. We, every second, we pump out 5 gigs. 
So which is so we we actually like pumping out all this data. Wow. So our system is designed to handle very large loads. Mm -hmm. So we understand that Binance is a borderless exchange platform, but what was the purpose of having a, a making a branch in Tokyo? This one. You're very right in that we are borderless mm -hmm. uh, exchange. In fact, the entire enterprise mm -hmm. and what Binance uh, represents is a global uh, initiative mm -hmm. and phenomenon. Um, our goal eventually is to have teams of people and offices around the world in every major and medium-sized cities around the world. The fact that we have an office here in Tokyo is because of the pedigree. Um, many of the founders, including CZ himself, uh, has spent a lot of time in Japan. And we especially like the fact that it is a highly and, and transparently regulated country when it comes to cryptos. Uh, we like to leverage the many, um, the, the large talent pool, uh, the large international talent pool that is available mm -hmm. in Japan, especially Tokyo. As of now, how many teams, uh, how, how many people in your um, people are here in Tokyo branch, if you don't know? Uh, I, well, not so much the branch, but in Tokyo we have about 12 people. From uh, uh, In different parts of the world, we have total about uh, 98, 99 people more. now. Yeah. So, we understand that you have a goal to spread, uh, to, to have an office all over the world. But uh, what was the purpose of having a multi-language on your website or platform? Mm. We believe in extreme localization. Long gone are the days when you have a company, you make a product or a website, and you expect the customer to come and play by your rules. We believe to be a truly transformational fintech and blockchain company and brand. We have to connect to the different cultures and different nationalities around the world. So something as simple as having your most familiar language on Binance.com is very important to us. Right now we have seven languages. So we have Japanese, we have English, we have Chinese, we have Korean, we have Russian, we have Spanish, and we have French. And there are many more to come. What we'd like to do eventually is to have all the languages available, but of course has to be correct, not just Google Translate, otherwise we would have done it a lot sooner. We actually sourced from the communities, asked for their help to make sure it is the correct way of saying the language on the website. So that is why we go so deep and go out of our way to make different languages available because we believe it's the respect to the different users around the world. Maybe I can add a little bit to that. We think the world is much smaller now. Uh, um, so the Earth is very small right now. We can travel around it in a couple hours. So, but we want to build a truly global platform. But to do that, we need to actually localize to every language. Right. So in addition to just providing uh, the user interface in Japanese, we want to provide customer support in Japanese. Mm -hmm. that are, uh, we are working on that right now. We are actually talking with a local Japanese company, uh, th uh, another service company to help us provide that support. Mm -hmm. So we will train them and they will provide support native in Japan to Japanese users. So we don't want to do it outside from India, India or just mm -hmm. it's not native. So we want our experience to be as local as possible but all over the world. So, 
And lastly, Japan is a very important country for us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we already have a good reputation in Japan. Mm -hmm. Japanese users like us, mm -hmm. and we like them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Japan's also, as we said previously, very friendly to cryptocurrency. <laughs> yes. And I think Japan will be in a leading place mm -hmm. in the cryptocurrency economy. Mm -hmm. So we think Japan will probably be the number one leader in all of the economies. So that's why this this region is especially, especially important for us. So there are lots of Japanese exchange. Um, they are registered as a um, um, exchange platform, uh, registered with, uh, exchange platform in domestic, such as uh, Bitbank, uh, CoinCheck, Bitfire. And what's what's the starting point, or what's differs from uh, what Binance differs from these? Uh, uh, I would say competitors, local competitors. Sure. And are you planning to uh, register the Binance uh, exchange in, in Japan? Okay. So, um, even though we are all exchanges, mm -hmm. uh, we are really not the uh, same. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say one is better than the other, but I think we are very different. Mm -hmm. um, number one, right now, Binance.com is an international uh, uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. So, we don't Number one, we don't touch fiat, so we don't touch Japanese yen, US dollars, any of those uh, currencies. So users on our exchange are usually, from, they already have Bitcoin or Ethereum, they want to buy Binance coin or um, some other coin. Mm -hmm. So we are sort of servicing a more hardcore crypto uh, community, mm -hmm. whereas um, say the Japanese yen exchanges are helping people say, I have Japanese yen, I want to buy Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They're sort of more early stage adopters. Um, so, and um, in terms of product, uh, we have a very different product to most Japanese exchanges. Um, we cover every device. We have iOS uh, apps, Android apps, we have a PC client. Um, so we have a lot of different uh, clients. So uh, we provide customer support in all languages. Mm -hmm. So we are more of a, we target more of an international liquidity instead of just Japanese yen liquidity. Mm -hmm. So there's many differences there. I think uh, in terms of company culture, uh, Japan has some of the large, like GMO sponsored companies, so they're very large companies doing this. Uh, whereas Binance is more of a smaller uh, team compared to them. I think in the crypto space, we're actually a pretty big team, we're close to 100 now. Uh, but uh, compared to some of the listed companies who are now getting into this space, we are small. Mm -hmm. So we're more uh, adaptive. Um, so there's a lot of differences. I think most people Actually, I think there's quite a lot of bloggers in Japan that have, re that have written about us, mm -hmm. and they actually explain the differences better than, than I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I unfortunately cannot read a lot of what they... Uh, mm -hmm. I put them into Google Translate, I can uh, get the <laughs> guess what, what it is. Uh -huh. um, in terms of getting a, a license, we want to have a Japanese local company uh, getting a local Japanese license. We want to try to do that. Okay. Um, we want to do a very simple, very basic Japanese yen to Bitcoin exchange, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. So most likely we, are, we will call that exchange Binance.jp. Mm -hmm. okay. So instead of Binance.com, which will be the foreign entity. Um, our local partner in Japan, which owns this office, so uh, we will work with them. We're hoping that they can uh, acquire the license for Japan with, together with, with us. We will help operate that exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can bring the international liquidity mm -hmm. onto the Japanese platform. And this way, uh, so that's our plan. Um, and we are proceeding with that. Okay. So we uh, briefly, uh, you briefly touched upon a Binance coin. Uh, so can you explain a little bit about what that is? Sure. Um, Binance coin uh, is a utility mm -hmm. token. Mm -hmm. And right now, you can use Binance coin to pay for the trading fees mm. on Binance.com when you trade. And currently you get 50% discount oh, okay. if you pay using the Binance coin as the trading fee. Wow. It's a very uh, good <coughs> discount. Um, the second part of course is to use it as gas to um, fuel many of the current <coughs> and future initiatives. Mm. Uh, recently, we have started having uh, one of the market 
Uh, for example, there's many different trading pairs for different uh, tokens or coins. Uh, traditionally, there is the Ethereum pairs, the Bitcoin pairs, but now we also have the Binance coin BNB pairs. And um, many users find that it's actually a good idea to keep uh, the BNB because they can always use it as the trading fee uh, for discount. So they like to have the trading pair and for a pro pro professional purpose, right now, uh, if you trade, you uh, trade the BNB pairs, um, it is zero trading fee. Um, also, we do a quarterly uh, roundup of, as CZ does, the quarterly um, announcement of the latest operational results. Um, we actually spend, is it a quarter of it? 25% of it? 20%. 20% uh, of it, uh, and use that to buy back the BMB <coughs> in the market, and we actually burn that portion of the BMB from the total supply. So actually the total supply would be uh, diminished mm -hmm. over, over time. And therefore, um, the potential value per BNB can have a positive uh, upward direction. Um, finally, we are still looking for um, additional BNB utility value. We're talking to different partners and many of them are interested in using BNB as the utility token on their platform. Whether it's the uh, potentially uh, things like virtual gifts, or for example, when we have the uh, ICO mm -hmm. on our launchpad, people can actually, instead of investing in, for example, Ethereum or BTC, mm -hmm. they can choose to invest in ICO using the BNB token mm -hmm. if they already have uh, the BNB position. So we like the way we have uh, designed the utility into the BNB token. And for me personally, I think it's a great investment. Mm -hmm. So, so the 2017 is almost ending. So, what's your goal for uh, 2018? <laughs> and more. Ah, and and more. And more. <laughs> and more. Yeah. <laughs> Many more okay. So, uh, very simply, we want to be the best platform for cryptocurrency and, uh, development. Mm -hmm. So, we want our exchange to be the best exchange out there, to be the most user friendly, mm -hmm. most stable most secure, most trusted uh, exchange. Mm. And we want our launchpad to be the most um, uh, professional, not professional, most um, a well run uh, ICO platform, most well balanced, fair. Mm. Um, and we want our labs to be very successful in selecting good projects, mm. helping them grow. So we want to be a key player in this crypto mm. industry. So short term, in 2018, probably we want to be the number one exchange in terms of trading volume. Uh, we want to cover more languages. Uh, we want to have more teams in more countries. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping to be uh, a dozen, two dozen countries at least. Uh, right now, we already have angels. Um, the guys were volunteering to help us. Mm -hmm. they're, they're called Binance Angels. They are a very important part of our team. Uh, we have them in over how many? So it is now um, uh, probably over 25, 30. Yeah, yeah. so 30. in 30 different cities around the world, we have Binance Angels already. And we want them eventually to become our team and um, <clears throat> employees or mm -hmm. team members. And we want to grow different teams in different regions. So we have a very different strategy than a sort of pure Japanese company or pure US company. We really want to build a around the globe company. Mm -hmm. um, that's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so for 2018, um, I think we just, con we just continue our current growth path and work really hard. Um, and I think we will, we will grow very quickly. Oh, okay. Is there any new project that you're work working on in Japan? Mm -hmm. In general, no, no, in general in, mm -hmm. or in Japan? Okay. Well, um, Binance Labs and Binance Launch had our new projects, mm -hmm. so we're spending quite a bit of effort uh, growing those projects. Um, we have a lot of new features in the pipeline, 
Um, some of them are very interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't disclose them right now because <laughs> that was yeah. kind of this <laughs> uh, And I, we actually don't know exactly when the, the schedules are, but we are just trying to push them out as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Um, I think you will see quite a number of updates on our PC client, and it's very new. Um, we're adding a lot more very interesting features that will make it very competitive. I think nobody else will have the features we add. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of website, we're adding a lot more features. Um, in terms of mobile app as well, mm -hmm. uh, we have a brand new version of the Android app that will hit the market this week. Okay. Uh, it's a complete rewrite, so it's a brand new version. Um, and the iOS app will follow that, so we have a lot of stuff going on. So there are a lot of people who view um, cryptocurrency very negatively. Um, to name a very famous person, uh, J.P. Morgan CEO, uh, Dang, Mr. Dang, and he said um, cryptocurrency is a bubble. Mm -hmm. But what's your take on <coughs> cryptocurrency in your personal opinion? <clears throat> uh. Well, I personally think he's wrong, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very sure he's wrong. Uh -huh. In fact, I think he's a bit of a. <laughs> uh, I think it's very naive for him to say uh -huh. that cryptocurrency is a bubble. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I've been in the blockchain industry for five years now, four or five years, mm. and this statement has always been there. But every over time, everybody who said that Bitcoin price just keeps going up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even with uh, a lot of pressure from governments around the world, some really big governments trying to push it down, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. it, price just always comes back up. Mm -hmm. So I think Bitcoin itself, cryptocurrency as an uh, as a industry, is definitely not a bubble. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> are there are some projects that are overvalued, mm -hmm. I think definitely. Mm -hmm. um, are, there pro are there especially ICO projects mm -hmm. that maybe bubble? Mm -hmm. Maybe, very likely. Mm -hmm. But then those are specific projects, not the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. right? But it's the same thing in the traditional VC investment world, where if you invest in 10 projects, you'd be very lucky if one, two of them actually survive. Mm -hmm. right? So that's, the, that's just the nature of startup projects. Mm -hmm. So right now in the ICO space, I'm not sure if it's a bubble or not, but that's just the nature of startups. Mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, there's a lot of risk. So that aspect, I think, uh, there may be some projects who are bubbles. Mm -hmm. But um, cryptocurrency will stay. Mm -hmm. It will be here two years, five years, 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. it will be Bitcoin here. is keep increasing. Yeah. And what's your uh, prediction of uh, <laughs> the price mm -hmm. for 2018 around July, August, a uh, <laughs> year from now? <laughs> <laughs> so it's we don't make predictions on price. Mm -hmm. It's very very difficult mm -hmm. to predict, especially when you say even when you say two thousand eighteen, mm -hmm. it's very hard to say where the price will be. Mm -hmm. If you say July of two thousand eighteen, mm -hmm. that's much much harder. <laughs> so let me give you a, a, a very simple story. Mm -hmm. uh, I well, I first bought bitcoins when bitcoins were cheap. But then uh, I bought a lot more when Bitcoins were around 600 US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought it would just keep going up. But then Bitcoin price dropped to $200. Mm -hmm. So I lost, and I bought a lot. <laughs> so I lost quite a bit of, so, but I kept everything, right? So I, I knew you oh, were, oh. I always believed in Bitcoin. So, but it took me two years for the price to recover. But now they're, they're, they're worth a lot. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's very hard to predict, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I've been through this cycle of basically uh, have staying at a loss for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it happens, mm -hmm. uh, but I truly believe long term, mm -hmm. uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, it might not be Bitcoin price, but cryptocurrency as an industry mm -hmm. will get much much bigger. Yeah. So a lot of uh, investors. Uh, of crypt cryptocurrency are to uh, they invest because they want to get rich, but to make this uh, industry bigger, we need to have more services available with cryptocurrencies like such as tokens and coins. And what's your opinion on what do you think? Uh, what what lacks in our society? Uh, uh, in your opinion. <coughs> 
<clears throat> so um, I think that this this industry is still very young. Mm -hmm. This is like internet in the ninety five ish time mm -hmm. where people talk about a lot of concepts, e commerce, mm -hmm. um, uh, the video conferencing that doesn't really work mm -hmm. because the infrastructure is not there. Mm -hmm. So I still think we need to build a lot more infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So exchange is a core infrastructure of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Wallets are a big component of the infrastructure. I think wallets can be improved quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Exchanges can also be improved quite a bit. That's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, payment gateways, mm -hmm. so help merchants accept payments. Mm -hmm. um, should be as easy, if more easier than Apple Pay, just swipe and done, right? Uh, when I talk about wallets, I think today the wallets are still very hard to use, especially in terms of security. Mm -hmm. uh, most people cannot guarantee their phone security. Mm -hmm. If you keep a million dollars, ten million dollars in your wallet, uh, most people are not comfortable enough with the security of their wallets. Mm -hmm. uh, not because the wallet software itself or Bitcoin itself, it's really more how do I secure this computer? Uh -huh. How do I make sure that it doesn't get stolen? Uh -huh. This computer I, I, it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. uh, if I drop it, I can still keep my Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So most people don't have that kind of technology of mm -hmm. secure backups, uh, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's still very technical. Mm -hmm. So most of the technical people are, uh, are the early adopters. I think in terms of uh, regulations, I think there should be different groups uh, working with different governments mm -hmm. to say, okay, how do we regulate mm -hmm. exchanges, wallets, service providers, how do we do KYC, uh, how do we do AML, mm -hmm. uh, so all of this kind of stuff, that's very important. Uh, the current blockchain, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain is not very good, <laughs> uh, well, it's good in the sense that it served its original purpose. Mm -hmm. But now the industry is so much bigger, mm -hmm. it's not capable of dealing with this kind of demand. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain is always full. Uh, the transaction fees are way too high. Mm -hmm. um, cryptocurrency is supposed to be very cheap to transfer, right? It's mm -hmm. supposed to be instantaneous. Mm -hmm. But right now, because of the load, it's not quite like that any anymore. So we need better blockchains. A lot of people are working on that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different projects are doing that already. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, oh, I'm sure some of them will make improvements. Um, so we want to see that as well. There should be more news and data analyst program uh, uh, apps. There should be more education uh, apps or, or content for uh, users, for newcomers to Bitcoin or to cryptocurrency. Um, yeah, so I think this is a lot of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. uh, this we're still at a very very early stage in this mm -hmm. industry. Yes. In your personal opinion, how do you think a cryptocurrency will change our daily lives and society? Mm -hmm. well, I think it's going to change a lot. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a story to sort of mm -hmm. maybe, maybe help you picture it. Mm -hmm. I think eventually everything will be tokenized, mm -hmm. and you need an exchange for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say you wake up in the morning mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> you get some coffee. Mm -hmm. You'll pay with coffee co uh, a coffee coin or a say Starbucks coin mm -hmm. or s some kind of uh, coffee brand. And let's say you don't have that coin. You have your own say Suzuki coin, mm -hmm. and you'll convert from your own coin into that instant instantaneously on your app, mm -hmm. right? And then you go to work. You get paid in the company coin. Right, and then you convert from that company coin into your own coin through an exchange as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't you don't actually buy and sell. The app does it for you, uh -huh. right? So the exchange is in the background, but there's always an exchange that kind of uh, have this kind of conversion market rate for you. Mm -hmm. you, you. You after work you go see a movie with your friend. You pay in the movie coin. Um, your friend forgets to bring his wallet or his phone. He borrows money from you. You lend him your coin, he pays you back in his coins. There's gonna be a lot of different coins. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. I think we will take. I don't know if you'll get there or if it'll be that exaggerated. Mm -hmm. But you can. Uh, but I think at least right now we're looking at the ICOs. We're seeing every project has a new coin now. Mm -hmm. I believe in 2018, mm -hmm. every single project on planet Earth will want to do the ICO or will want to create their own coin. At least they will want to. Whether or not they can is a different matter, based on diff different country, uh, 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 different countries, regulations, etc. Um, but we're seeing right now every new project, every new startup will create their own coin, which means eventually every company will have their own coin. 
uh, which pretty soon I think every person will have their own coin. Uh, some coins are more valuable than others because some people are more capable, etc. So um, I think that's gonna crypto is gonna change every aspect of our lives. Mm. So Ripple as uh, CTO uh, Stefan uh, specifically asked to Binance. Uh, what do you think the biggest uh, opportunity or use cases for uh, cryptocurrency in the long term? Is it uh, payment or store of value uh, or uh, speculation of investment or ICO? What do you think? Uh, it's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all of the above. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Stefan Thomas is a very old player mm. in the industry. He's very famous. I worked with him on a couple of different projects in the past. Mm. Uh, he helped, uh, when I was at OKCoin, he helped do the 100% proof of reserves mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, mm. with me. So um, I think there's a lot of different uh, uses for cryptocurrency. Um, there's not a specific one. Uh, I think this year, 2017, mm -hmm. to me, it feels like ICO mm -hmm. was the big thing in crypto. Oh. That kind of exploded mm -hmm. uh, everything. Um, 2018, what is it going to be? Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I know one thing for sure is as crypto gets bigger, there will be many different cryptos. And so they will need this is our last question. Um, to Japanese users uh, from Binance, do you have any comments? Um, to Japanese traders, investors? Sure. <clears throat> I think the Japanese uh, people have a unique opportunity mm -hmm. in the sense that Japanese government is very pro, is very advanced in the crypto regulations. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most uh, smart uh, regulators in the world, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I think Japan has the opportunity to become the leader in this space. There's lots of opportunities here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more new projects coming into Japan. Um, they're bringing the talented people, they're hiring local people as well. So there will be a lot of jobs in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, they're bringing a lot of funds because money follows the good projects. Mm -hmm. So I think in the next little while, there will be a lot of uh, uh, good projects, good opportunities in Japan. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, very, it's a very good chance to sort of participate in this industry. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as I said before, it's a very new industry, especially around ICOs. Mm -hmm. Nine out of pro 10 projects will fail. Mm -hmm. That's just the way startup projects work. Mm -hmm. So be very careful. Be, be sure that whatever you invest in is risk that you can tolerate. If you lose 100% of that money, your life will not be affected. <laughs> right? So it's like if you lose yeah. a pizza or if you lose like a pizza money or lunch money, so make sure that what you're, whatever you invest is not money that you depend on to live your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to manage risk very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the other thing that, uh, this is my advice for general people, but Japanese people usually do this very, very well already, is they do their homework, right? So you gotta research a coin, you gotta, you gotta understand what you buy. You need to understand why the coin is uh, useful, is valuable, mm -hmm. uh, why is it good, do you know the team? Um, so. In, do the homework first. Don't follow uh, people just buying something you don't understand. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a, there's many many opportunities, mm -hmm. and there's always never think oh because Bitcoin went from low price to high price I missed the opportunity to invest. Mm -hmm. There's always more opportunity later, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's always more opportunity in the future, mm -hmm. um, because now things are happening faster. There's more coins. There's a lot more choices. Mm -hmm. You always has more choices opportunities later on. So don't never think you missed the chance. There's mm -hmm. way more chances behind, uh, uh, later on. So never rush it. Be very careful. Um, invest. But I think this is a good, this is a very good industry to participate in. There's a lot of risks, but um, if you do your homework properly, I think there should be good rewards. Mm -hmm.